a great majority of the minerals that make up the subsurface are based on silicon dioxide as a basic building block for those minerals. And it's worth seeing a little bit about how that silicon dioxide works so that we can understand the chemistry and the physics of, of these systems. The basic building blocks within the silica dioxide realm are two. We have a tetrahedra, which has four oxygens surrounding one silicone, or we can have an octahedra, which has six oxygens surrounding one silicone. And the key thing to observe here is the size of the volume created by those oxygens. So the oxygens basically buffer out a certain geometry. They have a certain fundamental radius. And that creates an interior cavity that's about 41% the size of an oxygen. So it can just fit a silica in. But what else could fit in that gap? Well, we have this concept of isomorphic substitution. So we know that the tetrahedra will fit in 41%, something 41% the size of an oxygen. And we see that silicone or aluminum can fit into that space. Okay? Now notice that the silicon has a charge of four, but the aluminum only has a charge of three. And that means that if we have this substitution of aluminum in for silica, we have a charge imbalance. And this is fundamentally where the negative charge surface of, of clays comes from, or negative charge surfaces of, of, um, of all uh, these, these uh, phyllosilicate materials. Now, on the other hand, if we go to an octahedra, it can fit something 0.73 times the size of oxygen, which opens a huge range of different charged elements that could go in. Iron, magnesium, titanium, uh, uh, magne uh, manganese, sodium, and calcium, etc. But you'll see that only titanium has the charge of four. The rest of them will again leave a negative charge balance on the, on the surface. So this process of isomorphic substitution has its limitations and it fits in primarily in the octahedra, but it can also happen a little bit in the tetrahedra. And it fundamentally changes the chemistry. So in the formative environment of these clays, the abundance of these alternative um, minerals really dictates a lot of the chemistry of the clays that will, and the other minerals that will come out of that system. Generally speaking, we have two types of layering. And the cool thing about tetrahedral rings and octahedral rings, so you take those tetrahedra, they form into a ring of six octahedra and six tetrahedra. And it turns out those rings are compatible. So you can pick one octahedral ring and stick it right on top of a tetrahedral ring. And you can do a one-to-one -one sandwich, which would be like a kaolinite, or you can do a two-to-one sandwich, as we've shown here, which might include the montmorillonites, smectites, illites, and other uh, sheets, other clays. Between them, the interspace, uh, interlayer space is highly variable as per the mineral that you have in mind. And what might cause that spacing to change? The isomorphic substitution. Because if you have a super focused charge deficit, then a cation will get drawn right into that. And that would happen if the substitution was in the tetrahedral sheet. The tetrahedra is on the outside, so it can create a very intense local charge deficit. On the other hand, if the octahedral sheet, which is in the middle, had a charge imbalance, then that's expressed over a larger area because it's kind of filtered by that other surface of the tetrahedra. That means that a cation won't bind as firmly. It'll have greater hydration, and that means that the interlayer spacing between these successive sandwiches can be, can be greater. It also means that as the water status changes, that spacing might change. And so you'll see swelling clays. And the swelling clays, guess what? Have isomorphic substitution in the octahedral sheets. So this little diagram here of the triangular uh, tetrahedra and octahedra showing the cations kind of held between them. And that's a, very much what's going on here. So clay chemistry is really fundamental to much of the exchange of ions and the, uh, the buffering that the soil can provide. And so it's really important to understand the source of that uh, chemistry, which really comes from the basic structure of those, clay, of those octahedra and tetrahedra and the isomorphic substitutions that drive the charge imbalance and therefore the ionic environment for the clays.